out of yourself and into others. Love prefers the happiness of others to your own. True happiness comes not in your personal pursuit for selfish pleasure and satisfaction, but in finding God and giving His life to others and bringing them happiness. Then, happiness pursues and overtakes and overwhelms you personally without even seeking it for yourself. Look for someone to make them happy, and then happiness will find you. Get so busy trying to make somebody else happy, you can't help but be happy. Show them unselfish love and concern, and they'll love you more than they ever loved anybody. Let's get positive. Let's talk about the needs of others. Help us, Lord, to quit thinking about ourselves, not to weep for ourselves, but to weep for Thee and Thy work, Thy children, and to get our eyes off ourselves. The insane seldom think of others they're usually only thinking of themselves and interested only in satisfying themselves. How insane are you? Joy. Jesus and others, then you. By the grace of God, we're going to put him and his family first. because you're looking down too much at the waves. It's because you get your eyes on yourself instead of the Lord. Introspection instead of heaven-spection. All the introspection, analyzing and agonizing are merely works of the flesh which will have to be repeated next week. You've got to keep your eyes on Jesus because there's no other way to look but down and that's the pit the dismal abyss of horrible nothingness. Hitch your wagon to his star, and there'll be no stopping you. Weigh down the wagon with all the rocks the devil would like to pile on, and you'll sink for sure. Just roll him overboard, and let him fall behind, and you go on with the Lord. Help us, Lord to quit thinking about ourselves, but to get our eyes on you. None of us can stand the sight of ourselves. We're a mess and nothing without you, and only you can do it, if we just yield to you. Let's get positive. Let's talk about the Word. Let's take a look at Jesus. Look and live. Life for a look. of heaven upon earth, and 
be thankful. Even now, his invisible heavenly kingdom is already in operation and existence. It not only surrounds us, but it is within us. Jesus himself preached that the kingdom of God was already at hand, even in his day, and taught that we were to seek it first and pray that it should be on earth as it is in heaven. Those of you looking for the kingdom of God on earth will only find it within your own hearts and fellowship of the saints, the children of God. Heaven on earth. His kingdom's already here, and you're it. It has already entered you if you have Jesus and are filled with his Holy Spirit. This is like a little bit of heaven on earth, this sweet fellowship we have in love, one for another right here. We are already enjoying a foretaste of heaven on earth. We are living the way people are going to live, in love and sharing and sweetness and light and joy and praise and song and worship during the millennium. All this and heaven too. We have a heaven on earth in our hearts, the promised land of his kingdom within. Let's spread its glories abroad in the hearts of all children of men. said to an insignificant shoe clerk that he had led to the Lord, Dwight L. Moody, there is no limit to what God can do with a man who is yielded and willing to do his will. Moody replied, by the grace of God, I am determined to be that man. And he was. He became one of the world's greatest evangelists with tens of thousands of souls won for his crown. You cannot stop the man of faith. The Lord really leaves a lot up to us and our concern and prayer. He gives us what we want and have faith for. He's more willing to give than we are to receive. God has unlimited capacity to give, and what you get is only limited by your own capacity to receive. There are an infinite variety of opportunities in God's work. It only remains for a man to find and make them work. I'm shooting for the stars, and I want to hit the heights. I want God to do with us the most he can possibly do. What do you have a vision for? What do you yourself really expect God to do? What do you personally plan to do about it? shepherd must feed of the elements of the earth to be satisfied and to satisfy his flock.
When I was little, it seemed like God talked to me through everything. The sky and the clouds and the stars, the sun, grass, flowers, and the trees. I wanted to know what it meant, and God always told me. The Lord showed me so many spiritual truths about them. I listened to the still, small voice of God. Think how much God can show you from even a little beam of light, if you're just simple and childlike enough to appreciate it, to look and listen. Think of the years Abraham spent out in the fields watching flocks. No wonder he heard from the Lord. He had time to listen. Where did John the Baptist show up from? The big city of Jerusalem? No, he came out of the desert, out of the woods, out of the wilderness. So he'd have time to get away from the mob and hear the Lord. On the mount alone, you feel so close to the Lord. What do you hear on the mountain? You hear things that are going to change the world. What do you hear in the stillness? Whispers that are going to change the course of history. difficult compliments of his loving care and concern. If there is a little sheep who is always straying away and being somewhat independent and rebellious, the shepherd often takes it and deliberately break one of its legs. Then he will have to give it extra care and carry it until the leg is healed. And after that, the lamb will never leave the shepherd's side. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all, because this is one thing that helps keep us so righteous, our many afflictions. Sometimes these things happen to draw us closer to the Lord, to keep us humble and more dependent on Him. But he says in Hebrews 12, No chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Most of God's merciful judgments turn out to be blessings of chastisement to purge and purify his children and bring a change for the better. Whatever God does, he does it in love. He can give it or take it away, but whichever, he always does both, in love. He never takes one thing away from you without giving you something better.
was looking for a man to turn the hearts of the people, a man to call them back up onto the wall of his work. Throughout all time, God has always required his people to follow and obey his chosen mouthpiece, his prophet, his man of God, his chosen leader, shepherd, or king. God has always had his men of power for the hour, his anointed one. Without them, God's work can't go on. God has so seen fit and chosen for you a voice and a man through whom he speaks to give you the message which gives you the vision, which creates the faith that gives you the courage to take the initiative. I didn't choose to be your leader. God chose me. I merely obeyed. I said, Lord, I'll follow. Show me the way. And he did. And it led straight into your hearts. And you took me in. You opened your hearts. And you took me in and received me as your friend. And more as your own beloved father in the Lord. Your shepherd. Whose voice you suddenly knew was yours and followed, for it was the Lord's voice through me. They that love me most follow closest. Every day, if you pray. God's law of progress is, if you don't keep on getting more, you'll lose what you've got. Have that driving motivation which makes you feel like you cannot stop, that you've got to keep on going even if it kills you. Ask God for his love, that irresistible compassion which should motivate every child of God in everything they do. The love of Christ constraineth us. Keep on doing more and more every day and progressing. Sit down at the end of the day and sum up and keep books with your soul and weigh up the accounts and say, Now, what did I do today that I won't have to do tomorrow? What progress, what more have I done than the usual things? You take care of what you have to take care of today because he has given you the faith for today. It's today that you have to have faith for. Let's not worry about tomorrow, but let's do what we can do today, right now, today. Because look what God's going to do tomorrow. God's going to do mighty miracles tomorrow. He's going to do greater things than we ever imagined. Today is the tomorrow we dreamed of yesterday. Our guide, our standard, 
and the rod of measurement whereby we measure all things, even the words that God gives us today. It's the Bureau of Standards by which we measure all truth and all error. When you begin to think and pray about God's answer, what is the first thing the Holy Spirit always reminds you of? He always reminds you to look back to His Word. When I get a revelation, it comes like a quick flash, a picture or something, and then I have to confirm it and see if it fits and if there is a precedent where such a thing could have happened before. Look for a similar situation in the Word. Always look to the Word first. Check it with the Word. Measure it with the yardstick of the Scriptures. Weigh it in the balances. Check it out with the Department of Weights and Measures, the Bible. God can use Scripture any way He wants to apply it. You have to balance Scripture with Scripture. In God's Word, you can find the answer to every question, every problem you will ever have in life. There's nothing like the Word. Heaven is not the end, it's only the beginning. In fact, according to the Bible, for us, there isn't going to be an end. Eternity has no end. We shall rule and reign with Him eternally. I shall be with thee always, world without end. We are going to cover the earth with crystals of God's light as it slowly turns and enlightens the whole universe with the light of the Lord until it enlightens even the darkness. We'll circle the globe in nothing flat and even visit other planets and stars and ride the whole range of the universe. And it won't take days or weeks or months or years, not even light years, but with the speed of thought. God only knows how much more we'll have to conquer after we've conquered the earth and all the souls who have ever lived on it and all the problems. Who knows what other worlds we may have to conquer, what other universes we may yet have to learn to rule. And we'll enjoy every minute of it, if we're faithful servants. Till death do ye part. No, not even then will we part. Then we will be truly united, and we'll shake up the whole universe with the praises of God. Like the angels, we'll fight on.
things will happen and things will be different. God will answer prayer. You've got to get not only in prayer, but you've got to get in the Spirit. When you're strong in the Spirit, God will do anything for you. You're one with Him, and when this happens, you can command Him to do anything. If you are in tune, the Holy Spirit directs your prayer. If the Holy Spirit is absolutely in control, then it's automatically tuned in just right. Power, beam, direction, everything, by the Lord's own computer. And it can't miss. The whole structure of any house rests on these two key pillars, the will of God and the will of man. As long as they coordinate and are in line with each other, it will stand firm. We pray in the Spirit, and our prayers have more effect because we pray by the Spirit Himself, by His power, which is exactly what God wants in His will, in His own Spirit. And God Himself gets the desired effect. Delight yourself in the Lord and want to do His will. When we do, it is His delight to also give us the desires of our own hearts, because He's the one who puts them there when we're pleasing Him. of the Lord is in the perfume of the praises of his children. As sweet-smelling savour rise the prayers of the saints in the house of the Lord. He likes it. It's beautiful. He likes to smell our prayers like the fragrance of flowers. He takes a deep breath. Jesus smells our prayers like we smell flowers. He inhales them all. He just breathes them right in. They're like his breath. My soul hungereth after thee. Think of it. God needs us. The Lord's trying to show us what we could be and what we ought to be like and how beautiful we are to him and how smoothly and beautifully he'd like to see us operate with that perfume ascending and perfect communication. Lift thy hearts unto him in praise and thank the Lord. Kiss the son's mouth. Love him with all thy heart. Love the words of his mouth unto thy utmost, even the word that he hath sworn unto David. Are you a hole full of praise? Are you a bottle of sweet prayers to Jesus? Mm -hmm. 